and welcome back again to my radio workshop. Today we have another Roberts R250, the Revival R250. It's in a bit of a state. I have uh, already kind of polished up the front of it just to make sure that uh, it would polish up, but you can see uh, the state of it. Uh, not touched the back at all. Pretty decent. It's uh, people must just think that these are just painters' radios. You know, it's covered in all sorts of spots of something or other. So I have plugged it in. I have tried it. It is working. The alignment's out. Uh, so I will do a rough and ready alignment on this. Uh, they don't need much more than that. Um, but basically, I'm going to take this one to pieces and get it cleaned up. Uh, you know, the dial plate itself is absolutely rinky. So, yeah, let's do that. If you've looked back at my previous videos, you've seen me do these before. There's two shoulder screws to remove. And one at that side too. Just heard something drop off inside. I think the uh, plastic uh, shoulder screw retainer inside might be broken. No, it does. It looks okay. It might have just been the battery lead that moved. So then remove the aerial screw. And withdraw the aerial from the top of the radio. Just looking in on the side. This one on the left hand side as we're looking at it now. Remove the shoulder board. And then we can withdraw the radio from the case. Disconnect the battery leads. And, uh, sorry. Not the battery leads, the speaker leads. These ones are on quite tough, that's why I'm just using a pair of pliers as leverage. And remove the power lead. And that is the radio out of the case. And pop the case on one side. And just do a quick visual on the board. Zoom you in. So I can point certain parts out. We've got uh, 1000 UF cap at the back, 470 at the front and the TDA7231 audio chip here. Uh, they're, uh, they're okay. The, uh, the other caps I've never had a problem with on any, any model of, of these but I'm, I'm just making sure that everything's physically okay. I've just done one recently where one of the retaining screws for the on-off volume switch, uh, it was screwed kind of, it, it missed the hole um, and it kind of screwed onto the plastic at the side and that's the, that was the only thing that was holding it on. So I'll just do a quick physical check. The uh, noise that I heard while I was taking it apart, it is there. The, the shoulder screw, uh, where the shoulder screw goes through into the retainer, it has fallen off. So that will be inside the radio, inside the case. There it is. So I will be uh, hot gluing that back on. I might mix up some epoxy. But this is just a clean, pop the knobs off, you have to be careful when you're taking off the tuning knob, um, because you can, if you're a little bit overzealous, pull the spindle out as well. Now some of these remove quite easily, this one's been a bit... Uh, being a bit tricky. 
just use the spudger and work it around. And there we go. So that's the two knobs removed. And then I can use the spudger again, just under the edge, just to lift the dial plate up. These are just stuck on with uh, the thinnest of uh, adhesive uh, backings. And then we get something, something nice to spray on there to clean it with. And then just work it in with a cloth. This stuff that I'm I'm using for cleaning, it's it's my own special secret recipe, and it even removes paint spots because obviously you can see on the left hand side where I've just wiped it, it's all nice and clean. On the right hand side, it's dirty but covered in tiny paint spots, and it doesn't have fetch off some gunk and another clean bit of cloth and a bit more spray Considering these things are up to, well, they're 20 odd years old, coming up to 30 years old, you expect some discoloration on the dials, on the, you know, on the uh, tuning plate. And just uh, inspecting it then afterwards. Make sure that I've got off as much as can possibly come off, and to see whether it's actually worth putting it back on or exchanging it for another one that I've got. I do like them to look their best, they're never going to look brand new again because you can see the, uh, the bleaching. Yeah, that's. Uh, Kind of okay. Got some splodges of something else on there as well. And it looks like part of it's melted. I'll just have a look at some other dial plates that I've got. Got a near I didn't yeah. That one can go on a I will save it anyway. But I've got another dial plate here. Looks exactly the same. But that's already done, that's that's a lot better than the one that I've just taken off, so we'll use that one. Just have a look inside at the... Inside the radio and see if it needs a dust off. And it does. Never spray anything inside here. Apart from maybe some switch cleaner down the down the switch bank, uh, but these knobs will be coming off as well to get cleaned before they get put back on. In fact, I'll do that now. Again, these do just pull off. Some of them can be tougher than others, but generally they're okay. And then just give the switch bank a dust out. And then we're good. Put the donor dial plate on. Have a look at these switches, switch tops. Give them a, a spray with something nice just to uh, remove any. 25 or 26 year old DNA that's built up there. 
these ones are generally okay they're easy to clean they do suffer again from some bleaching there's not a lot you can do about that I have actually yeah refinished the you know several two well more than several many and several 250s in the past where I've uh, resprayed the the case resprayed the handle and I've even resprayed these switches um, and it makes the the radio look brand new again I kind of don't like to do that I will do if somebody wants me to do it um, but I kind of don't like to do that because I like a, an older radio to look like it's had a little bit of a life let's have a look at the rotary switches you can see there's some gunk on there so again see what my spray does to this stuff it's kind of instant it is my own secret recipe this you know there are several chemical things that I do use from time to time as well but this uh, it's all plant and fruit based that actually makes the radio smell nice as well if you're ever that way inclined Just lost now where I've just put the other one and I haven't even moved. That's rolled down the bench. I've put the volume switch back on and the tune in. Press the switch bank control tops on. temporarily apply some power and I can do the alignment by ear. It's not a bus ride away but uh, I do like it to be spot on. I'll just bring back in the case because this allows me to test the speaker as well just to make sure that that's hunky dory. It did sound okay earlier, but I like to test everything. And then apply some power and switch on. Connect up the external aerial. Now yeah, we've got Radio 2 at the moment on 92. It should be 88 to 91. It's kind of not not that far away, but I've got 88 sat on 91, and 91 sat on nearly 92. Oh, screwdriver. I did have, and I will have to find them out, some uh, ceramic screwdrivers because I don't like using the metal ones for doing this. I've got a reference on. The number for all requests starting with Silicon 0800 288 291. 0800 288 291. Sirius here on Radio 2, around 504. So call now. You're on the jockin'. Tiny Kamosi. Here comes the hot stepper. Turn off my reference. So we've now got um, Radio 2 on 89 and 91, and if I go up to 101, which is classic, that should be.
spot on. Adjust the Do all this by ear. And then back down to and we're good, that's that done. That's sounding as you know the best that it uh, will do. There's one more way that you can make these sound better and that's to put in a different speaker. I'll show you the speaker that's in that. It's an 8 ohm 1 watt speaker. Uh, it's a 1.5 watt amp um, chip. Um, so you can go a little bit uh, a little bit bigger Try and show you the difference. This is just a test speaker that I've got from a, a Roberts dab set, which is uh, four ohm, three watts. And if I uh, if I connect the radio back up and I connect this speaker up, there's a vast difference. But unless it's a super duper condition radio, I tend to leave the original speaker in, even though they do sound a little tinny. There's the uh, dab speaker connected up. Uh, up radio 4 at 7. Susan finds herself rebuffed and Helen attempts to combat her nerves in tonight's episode of da -da 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 -da, The Archers. On Radio 5 Live, the Friday Football Social at 7, of course, Iggy Pop on 6 Music with an exclusive first play from The Last Poets. That's tonight across the BBC and the BBC Sounds app from 7. <laughs> So that's with the uh, four ohm, three watt speaker, as opposed to the original eight ohm, one watt speaker. So they can uh, they can sound better if you're that way inclined to put in a different speaker. Um, I only mention the the these ones from the Roberts Dab sets because uh, they physically fit in very nicely too as well as uh, sounding good it's got to fit in there so I'm just bobbing it back together now put the air reel back in at the top I'll try and keep you in shot I keep forgetting that I'm videoing this I often talk to myself while I'm fixing radios and I sometimes forget that uh, that I'm recording as well and there goes the aerial screw and the aerial wire with the cleat I'm just fastening down the aerial One thing I didn't do, so the aerial's coming back out again, is I didn't resolve that uh, that shoulder retainer. I didn't address that at all, so I'm going to do that now. If I find what I've done with it. 
obviously put it somewhere safe. <laughs> Otherwise I shan't get the uh, shoulder screw back in. I'm just going to pause a moment while I hunt that down. I haven't moved from here so it shouldn't be far from here. I'll be right back. And we're back. I found the retainer. There's enough of the existing plastic in there to hold it. So I'm screwing that in now. So I didn't need to epoxy or hot glue it. to connect the aerial wire just over the top of the screw thread and then once this is done it is just a case of cleaning the case I do have as well um, a board uh, to put in the back of this. It's one that I made earlier. Um, and again, whatever I've done with it escapes me. I'll find that and uh, and bob that in as well. One moment. It's just a, a backboard. Uh, I've got plenty of this board and I make these up myself. I just think they look an awful lot nicer, more professional when they've got these things in. full of brass screws just to put in to hold this backboard in place. Not the most thrilling of things watching me do something like this, but once this is done, it does look an awful lot better. Having the backboard in as well also does improve the sound from the tinny speaker. That could have been nasty. And we're back and I've got the, uh, the backing board back in. I've put some more physically smaller brass screws in there and 
And let's see how she sounds now. Let's make sure. On BBC Radio 2. Hi everyone, this is Alan Palmer from London. It's my 44th birthday today, and to celebrate, I'm kicking off with a Prosecco party meeting. This is Colin. Let's rest up with friends to party. Three, two, one, it's the weekend! For some reason I'm getting some interference from my external aerial. Nevertheless. There we go, I'm not playing on that for too long. 500 to 1 odds of winning one of the tax free prizes. And provisional figures Let's turn from off the one of the fluorescent lights. in the UK was the hottest on record. So, whoever's doing socials for the Brits. First plate's nice and clean, I've just got to externally clean it. Uh, it should scrub up really rather well, so I'm going to do that now and I will be back with you very shortly. And we're back. I've got rid of 99.9% .9 of the paint spots. I've given it a buff and a polish up. Looks lovely now, compared to how it arrived. Pretty pleased with that. Another one done. Catch you in the next one.